Hi everyone, it's Andrea here and I'm here with my May book haul. Now, I won't be doing book hauls every month because I don't normally buy a huge amount of books. This month I bought nine, um, so I'll go through them really quickly. Some of them I've already read and they will be in my wrap up which will be up in the next couple of days. So the first book I bought is one that everybody has read and I didn't know about it until I started watching booktube. Um, so I went out and found a copy and that is obviously Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. This is one of the books I have read this month and it will be included in my monthly wrap up. Like I said, that will be up in the next couple of days. Now the second book I bought this month is a play because um, I do a lot of theatre and I like to read plays as and when I can. And the play I bought um, was Five Lesbians Eating a Quiche um, and it's uh, by Evan Lander or somebody like that. There's a few people who uh, helped write this. E Evan Linder and Andrew Hobgood. So this is a very short play. Um, again, I've read this one so it will be in my wrap up. The next book is another book that um, everybody seems to have read and I would not have picked this book up if it hadn't have been for the booktube recommendations. Again, I've read this one this month so it will be um, in my wrap up and that is The Grace Keepers by Kirsty Logan. So yes, I would not have never have picked that up if it hadn't have been for booktube recommendations so thank you booktube. Um, Another book I bought this month is by one of my favourite authors and that's called The House on Cold Hill by Peter James. Now Peter James writes the uh, Roy Grace series of detective novels um, but he also writes some supernatural ones and this one says Moving from the heart of Brighton and Hove to the Sussex countryside is a big undertaking for Ollie and Caro Harcourt and their 12 year old daughter Jade but when they view Cold Hill House, a huge dilapidated Georgian mansion Ollie is filled with excitement. Despite the financial strain of the move, he has dreamed of living in the country since he was a child, and he sees Cold Hill House as a paradise for his animal-loving daughter, the perfect base for his web design business, and a terrific long-term investment. Caro is less certain, and Jade is grumpy about being separated from her friends. Within days of moving in, it becomes apparent that the Harcourt family aren't the only residents of the house. A friend of Jade's is the first to see the spectral woman standing behind her as the girls talk on FaceTime. Then there are more sightings, as well as increasingly disturbing occurrences in the house. As the haunting becomes more malevolent and the house itself begins to turn on the Hawk Harcourt, the terrified family discover Cold Hill House's dark history and the horrible truth of what it could mean for them. Now, I love the Peter James freaky ones. There are some really, really good ones. He really has written some of these. Uh, P P Perfect People is one of them. Prophecy is another one. I really like his writing. So I'm looking forward to reading that. Really looking forward to that. Another one I bought is a um, another Marilyn-based novel. This one's called The Empty Glass. It's by J.I. Baker. Um, again, it's about her death, aren't they all? In the early morning hours of August the 5th, 1962, Los Angeles County Deputy Coroner Ben Fitzgerald arrives at the home of the world's most famous movie star, now lying dead in her bedroom, naked and still clutching a telephone. There he discovers the Book of Secrets, Marilyn Monroe's diary, revealing a doomed love affair with a man she refers only to the general. In the following days, Ben unravels a wide-ranging cover-up and some heartbreaking truths about the fragile, luminous woman behind the celebrity and soon the sinister and surreal accounts in the Book of Secrets bleed into Ben's own life and he finds himself, like Monroe, trapped in a deepening paranoid conspiracy. The Empty Glass is an unforgettable combination of the riveting facts and legendary theories that have dogged Monroe, the Kennedys, the Mafia and even the CIA. It is an exciting debut from a remarkable new thriller writer. So it might be interesting because he did say that it's about theories and legends as well as the truth. Um, obviously you've had a bit of an idea what my theory is on the Kennedys and all that nonsense because I call it nonsense but I am actually quite looking forward to reading this it looks looks like it's quite interesting so I'll be picking that one up this in in June uh, another one I bought this is quite odd because I bought this one and then I discovered I'd actually downloaded it um free from uh, for, for the ebook and that's Jodie Taylor's just one damn thing after another um now I like time travel I like history what's not to love about time traveling historians so again, I have read this one and it will be in my wrap up. Next on the list is a book that came out in April and that is Murder at the 42nd Street Library by Con Lehane. 
so obviously <laughs> it's got murder and library in the title what's not to like um and basically says this first book in an irresistible new series introduces the librarian and reluctant sleuth Raymond Ambler, a doggedly curious fellow who uncovers murderous secrets hidden behind the majestic marble facade of New York City's landmark 42nd Street Library. Murder at the 42nd Street Library follows Ambler and his partners in crime solving as they track down a killer shining a light on the dark deeds and secret relationships that are hidden deep inside the famous flagship building at the corner of 42nd Street and 5th Avenue. In their search for the reasons behind the murder, Ambler and his crew uncover sinister and profoundly disturbing relationships among the scholars studying in the iconic library. Included among the players are a celebrated mystery writer who has donated his papers to the library crime fiction collection, that writer's long missing daughter, a prominent New York society woman with a hidden past, and more than one of Ambler's colleagues at the library. Shocking re revelations lead inexorably inex to the traumatic events that follow. The reading room will never be the same. Again, this is one I've read, and I will um, give you my views on it in my wrap up. Now, two left. Yay! So, <laughs> the next one I bought is Tony Parsons' The Slaughter Man. Um, and apparently this is the second in, in a, a series of three. Um, there is no bump, so I can't tell you what it's about. But basically, um, it's about a DC named Max Wolf. Um, oh, on, uh, on New Year's Day, a wealthy family is found dead in their exclusive gated community, their youngest son stolen away. The murder weapon leads Detective Max Wolf to a killer who 30 years ago was known as the Slaughterman. But can the Slaughterman but the slaughter man is now old and dying. Can he really be back in the game? All Max knows is that he needs to find the child and stop the killer before he destroys another innocent family or finds his way to Max's own front door. Another murder mystery. And the last one I bought was George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones because I haven't read it and I'm wondering what all the fuss is about, basically. So I don't watch a lot of TV, so I'm not really interested in watching the series, but I do want to read the book. So that's what I bought in May. There may be a haul in June because my birthday falls in June, but generally I think they're going to be a bi-monthly because I don't buy that many books. But if we see a big month, then I'll do a haul. So that's what I bought this month. What did you buy? Let me know in the comments below. Bye!